here again. You know, in the book of First John, chapter two, verse fourteen, I share this this morning. John, who is called the beloved, who became the object of jealousy in the eyes of Peter, when Peter was being asked, "Do you love me more than this?" Peter was asked three times, and he wept. And when he had come down, he asked the Lord about John, and he asked him, "Lord." What about this God? His name is John. He said, "Who cares about that? But I care more about you, because he thought that Jesus loved him more." Young people, look at me. Your life is not dependent on anyone else but to God. Amen. Amen. Your life is in the hand of God. Don't worry about those people around you, whether they do better or lesser than you. Trust God. A lot of you were born in poverty. Many times you see that your parents will feed more of your other siblings than you. Don't worry about that. The most important is that God loves you. All right. Amen. Let's say it together. God loves me. God right. loves me. There is a word here that I would like to read with you in First John chapter two, verse fourteen. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. Let's say it together, young men, young women. Young men and young women. Let's say it together. God has written something for me. God has written something. It says here, I have written to you, young people. If you feel old, then you're not young people. You know, youth is really in the heart and mind of people. It says here because you are strong. Young people are strong people. They have what we call idealistic life. How many of you can say that to me? I am strong. I am strong. There is a song sang by Helen Reddy. I'm a woman. I am strong. I am strong, and I am a woman. You know. You are a woman. Think about the woman that defeated Samson and deceived him. His name, her name is Delilah. Very good. Remember this woman, who called on by God to kill a general who was running away from the battle because they were defeated. That was the name of the woman. That was a woman. Who invited this general? He was so afraid. He said, "Hide me." And he hit. She hit her. And you know what she did? She did not just hit her. What she did was gave him milk. He was so tired, exhausted. And the more he drank, the more he felt that he was asleep. I forgot the name of that lady. But when the general who was the enemy of Israel. Fell asleep. She took a peg of one of those tents and took a big wooden hammer and drove it into his temple. And when the Israelite soldiers came in and said, "Come, I know who you are looking for," and they saw that the general who tormented the Israelites was already dead. Women, young men, God has called you strong. Amen. Amen. The Word of God says, "I can do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens me." The Word of God is our strength. You can be strong on your own human strength, but without God's Word, you will still be unmatched, the wrong match against the devil. The devil is so strong. In one day, he destroyed the family of Job. All of his children were all wiped out. The house where they were staying collapsed and went down to his children who were having a feast. The next thing is that all of his possessions were taken away, and he praised God for that because he said that I am strong. God allowed him also to 
be stricken and he lost his heart. His wife said, curse God and you die. Forget about God. Hate him. But Job was strong because he has the promise of God's word. He said to his wife, are we going to just receive the good and not face the challenge of life or evil? Job was made strong. Amen. Amen. Let's say together, I am strong. I am strong. Because of the word of God. Because of the word of God. Let's always say that and be encouraged to say that. For with God, I can do all things that strengthens me. Paul said that in face of persecution, when he will fight with his faith, with his obedience to God, and in his word, throngs and throngs of people who will deceive others and put him in prison, stone him until he dies, and at the same time, chase him wherever they can find him. But he never lost any faith in God. Why? Because he kept the word of God. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Because the word of God abides in you. When the word of God abides in you, you can overcome the wicked one. Amen? You know who the wicked one is? Satan. Let's say it together, Satan. Satan. He is against you. He hates the you. He hates your guts. He hated you even before you were born. And he is still hateful of everyone whether you are a believer or not. He is a destroyer. He's a murderer. He's a thief. There is someone that leads you with a passion. You think you are given up by people? I tell you the truth. Satan will give you more than what you hate in life. It says here, you will overcome. Let's say together, a champion. Champion. How do you make a champion that overcomes? The champion goes for training. The champion knows his goal. The champion knows what it takes to overcome. A champion knows that there are those who call opponents. A champion can never be called a champion until the person is what? Ready to give up his best. So that he will what? Win over an opponent. It says here you have overcome. Meaning someone who is opposing you. Someone who pushes you away from your true purpose in life. Who is that? He will use people. He will say that. He will use circumstances. He will pollute your mind. He will give you doubts about God because... That is his word. That's the reason why the devil is called the wicked one. I would like you to believe that this coming year in the school year, you prepare yourself to follow God, to obey Him, trust in His word, live His word, read His word every day. Do your devotional journal. When you come here for prayer, you are energized better. You see those people who are passionate for God and pray. This week alone, we got some young folks here that showed up. I believe he was 13 or 14, that he took the bus early in the morning. And he came in here earlier than me. Praise God. Oh, that's an amazing young man. And then the next day, he brought his brother, another short boy. Amen. Amen. And they came in here for Look at me, every one of you. You want to be a champion? You want to overcome the evil one? All of you, in the eyes of God, when you carry His word, when you are called strong, is when you hold on to the word of God that abides in you. What does the word of God abide in you? It means you keep it to yourself. Let's say together, I hid my word. You know, the word, David said, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Sin is the way the enemy can enter into your life. Let's say together, I will avoid sin. I will avoid sin. I will, I will hate sin. I will hate you sin. know what sin is? Everything that 
God tells you to do and you break it, that's a sin. The Word of God says you will love the Lord with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you begin hating God and turning yourself away from God, that is sin. When you do no longer, when you no longer delight in Him, you say, I would rather watch TV rather than instead of reading my Bible, spending time with Him. That is pulling away from God. You know, God wants you and asks that you spend time with Him. And you begin in the morning because He wanted you for Himself. Actually, when you live your true purpose in life, He called you for Himself. Let's say, I have made you so that you will become a person of similar likeness. We call it created in God's image. It doesn't mean that you have to be a white, a black, a brown, a yellow, a red, or green, or purple person. Hmm? You know what the truth is? God created you in His character. That you will delight in Him. And when you love Him because of that purpose, I tell you with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you are obeying Him. You are being what? Loved by Him. And what happened? You will love your neighbor as yourself also. If you gossip, or spread wrong news or rumors or things about your neighbor, then you're breaking the law. You are sinning. God loves us, regardless of our color. Amen. Amen. When I stood up here, some people were calling me, Hey, God. We don't have the same color of the skin. We don't have the same amount of hair. <laughs> they call me that. And I'm proud about that. I wish my wife would have children as many colors as you. Huh? But my wife did not have any more child. But you are my spiritual children. Amen. 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 And here. Send up Marquis. I call him God's gift for my life. Praise God. And that's how God sees me also. Irregardless of my color. Irregardless whether I'm trim or not. Yeah. Looks like my keys. It's not as trim as I am, huh? How much do you weigh my keys? 350? <laughs> All right. Go take a seat. Amen. Amen. Let's say together, I am. I am. Me. 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 To God's image. To God's image. Amen. 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 Why? Because God tells you, by my young people, I'm proud of you, young people. That's the word of God for you. Yay. Because you are strong, young people. Because you are a champion and you have overcome the wicked one. Stay away from drugs because drugs keep you away from winning against them. Amen. Don't you know that the number one consumer of drugs in the whole world are the Americans? We have the highest amount of drugs imported all the way from Mexico, all the way from the Pacific Ocean, all the way from the Gulf of Mexico. All the way from the air. Why? Because the devil wants to destroy you young people. You are being introduced for free that eventually when you grow old, you become a junkie. But I want you to believe that God has a plan for your life. I would like you to pursue God. I know I have a few more minutes left. I want you to build on your purpose in life. What is your purpose in life? Number one, you were created for God's calling. Meaning, Pastor, do you tell me that God is calling me to serve Yes. God 
has a great plan for you. Your parents may have given up on you, others, the teacher may have given up on you, the government may have given up on you, the society may have given up on you, but God say, no, I love you with an everlasting love. That means God has not given up on you. Amen. Tell the person next to you, you are dearly loved. You're dearly loved. I am dearly loved. I am dearly loved. And that's our only Father God in heaven who loved every one of us. And He said that if you follow me, if you do my commandments, I will give you great success. And in the book of Joshua, God said, Sanctify yourself. Make yourself separated from my use. And tomorrow you will see amazing things. That is an amazing call for us. Hey, we stay away from sin. God will do amazing things. What is that amazing thing? That amazing thing is for every one of us. That you will not become the part of the failures of the past. This afternoon I met a couple. I never said with this couple for seven years. Man, says so old. And I said to him, look at me. I know your friend. I know your dad is divorced. He's remarried. I know your dad, even though your mother and him were married. He was already, what, living with a mistress? I said it to him. And that's what happened to you in the first place when you got married. Your wife was already checking someone. Not only that, she divorced you. Look at this person that you have. Her father abandoned her mother and went with another woman. You notice that? Look at her. She already had a child and a woman. Look at your two sisters. They already had children and a woman. And what will you do with your lives together? Both of you are byproducts of faith. How many believe that you can pray that out? Amen. 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 Tomorrow I'll be dedicating two babies. Oh, oh. And they were born because their parents choose to let them. I would like to let you know that I'm very happy to dedicate babies. And I would like you to realize that God loves babies. When Jesus Christ was born, the enemy moved the hand of a king whose name is King Herod. And when he heard that there were wise men who came from the east, he rose up in a cunning way, in a subtle way, in a deceiving way, and he said, Tell me, where about of this baby? And the king, or the wise men, said to him, In Bethlehem. And as soon as after this, wise men came to this and gave their homage, their honor, at the same time, their gifts, to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ was born. They left on the other way because the angel of the Lord said, Do not go back to him. And then, when he felt and he understood that he was, you see, you know what he did? He surrounded Bethlehem and together with other surrounding towns and communities. They gathered all of the babies, two years old and younger, and massacred them. You know, there are those people who are in offices who push, push and push about abortion. Because that is something that Satan wanted to do. Hate to say that they are the instruments of the devil. It's been coming along for a long, long time. You know, as you sit with someone next to you, 
Talk to the person and say, You are blessed that you are alive.